Ken Spector with Happy Cow. We're on the very first vegan cruise. It's going from Tilbury, England, throughout the fjords of Norway. I am here with one of my personal heroes. It's Dr. Gregor, uh, nutritionfacts.org. He's an MD and he knows an incredible amount about food and medicine and just an incredible speaker, an incredible guy. How are you? Oh, How's the cruise? Let's do it. The so, cruise is fantastic. Fantastic, yes. That's right. And the food is amazing, huh? The food is delicious. Yes. Let's get into uh, some of the questions regarding food and myths about vegan food for okay. mostly vegans but for other people as well yep. myth or fact yep. food combining yep. and combining foods properly is that important in the vegan diet or in any diet most of the myth combining the food combining stuff is is ridiculous but okay. i mean there's a few things like you know like black pepper and turmeric mm -hmm. Um, uh, you know, the black pepper, you know, the piperine black pepper suppresses your liver's ability to mm -hmm. detoxify curcumin, so you actually have higher levels in your bloodstream. And so there are a few food interactions, but like, you know, don't eat, you know, fruit and whatever to get, I mean, it just makes no sense. What about, you know, a lot of women, actually men I've talked to as well, talk about beans, eating beans with sugar and getting gas from that and sort of combining foods that from that perspective. Uh, How do you feel about that? No, I mean, if you're getting, I mean, you can get gas just from straight beans, yeah. right? I mean, particularly people who aren't used to eating beans, mm -hmm. it has to do with your, you know, good gut flora. And so mm -hmm. if you have to go slow and there's some low gas beans, there's a whole bunch of things. You have a, I have a, a blog talking about, you know, all the various ways. I mean, it's critical that we, you know, keep legumes and that, beans, split peas, chickpeas, and lentils. And there's just ways, you know, kind of tips and tricks you can do to keep, but it has nothing to do with eating it with sugar, without sugar. And acidic I mean, fruits with sweet fruits, so and there's yeah, all sugar, these myths. Sugar doesn't actually make it myths. down to the colon. I mean, sugar is actually absorbed in the small intestine, so it doesn't even make sense that there'd be some kind of interaction. And sweet foods, uh, I mean, sweet fruits, sour fruits, the more fruits, the better at any time of the day in any combination. Okay. I've heard that cold water, yeah. drinking cold water can shock the system and yeah. inhibit some level of digestion. Myth or fact? Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah. That's simple. Drinking water while you're eating, yeah. and as far as diluting the saliva, which inhibits digestion, is that a myth or is that a fact? Ridiculous. Exercise post-eating, is that good or bad? Is it a myth that exercising post-eating is bad for you? Myth or fact? Exercise whenever, before eating, during eating, after eating, anytime you get an exercise, do it. Okay. I recommend 90 minutes a day. And a question about fasting. Yeah. Um, I've heard fa myth or fact, yeah. optimal is stopping your food consumption after seven o'clock and then beginning your food consumption at 11 o'clock so you're able to have a 14 hour fasting period. Is that good for us? Is that a myth or is that a fact? So it's probably good to stop eating um, uh, before seven. You're raising this concept of kind of intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. kind of time restricted feeding. Should we kind of try to squeeze food into you know, eight, six or four hours every day. Um, but that uh, conflicts with the data that suggests that shifting food um, caloric intake earlier in the day is preferable. So for example, if you give people 2,000 calories, the exact same 2,000 calories in dinner versus breakfast, some of two groups randomized, actually has vastly different physiological effects. And mostly it's kind of a circadian rhythm effect. There's something called chrononutrition, Talks about this really interesting, you know, we talk about microbiome, epigenetics, but actually there's really some interesting circadian rhythm nutrition uh, interactions, which I'm digging through now. So there's a lot of conflicting. So the intermittent fi fasting literature would suggest, hey, that'd be great, skip breakfast, push it back. But then we have all this breakfast literature that shows, no, actually we want to, um, you know, have a very light supper, but have the larger breakfast, push a caloric intake to the beginning. And so that's the kind of stuff I'm going to tease out for this video series. That's what makes it so exciting. Okay. Nutritional yeast is a neurotoxin and people should not be eating it. Myth or fact? Ridiculous. Okay. Ridiculous. And is there any sort of limit to nutritional yeast? If I put it all over my popcorn oh, and... No, look, and if you have hydratinitis... Copious amounts? If you have hydratinitis separativa or Crohn's disease, I wouldn't add nutritional yeast to anything. I'd mm -hmm. stay away from them mm -hmm. completely. But uh, everybody else, I mean, it's, you know, healthy... I don't know. Uh, I mean, if it had... I'm sure there's some uh, limit to the... Because they fortify it with... I mean, the reason your pee turns bright yellow after eating mm -hmm. nutritional yeast is because the riboflavin they had, there's probably some upper daily limit. No, it's water soluble, should be able to pee it out. Basically, I don't know. Uh, I, I know of no upper limit. Hmm. But of course, people that uh, aren't suffering from uh, yeast-triggered autoimmune diseases. 
What are the top five foods that you feel vegans should not be eating?